You are listening to a podcast created by the Minnesota Alliance for Geographic Education. Our mission is to help you understand your world better through geography. This podcast is intended for geography teachers and may help them address some of the Minnesota geography standards for grades 9 through 12. The content of this podcast is about the notion of political geography and several of its subparts, such as nationalism, state, and sovereignty. When a teacher is presenting content from this podcast to their class, it is suggested that some type of graphic organizer be used to help students retain the information. In this podcast, nationalism will be discussed by Jennifer Breidenbach, a geography teacher from Minnetonka High School in Minnesota. I am Fred Quincy, a member of the Minnesota Alliance for Geographic Education. Nationalism is an important topic that is often difficult for my students to find interesting in both history and human geography. Political concepts and ideas are a bit abstract for teenagers whose role in the political process is often limited. The goal of this podcast is to provide a very small bit of information in relation to political geography in hopes of helping me or other teachers figure out a way to make this topic more meaningful. Additionally, one of the benchmarks of the 9 through 12 social studies standards in Minnesota asks that students understand the concept of nationalism and how sovereignty is impacted by international agreements. Simply stated, political geography is the study of the political organization of space. Like other areas of human geography, it contains many critical definitions. A state is defined as a politically organized territory with a permanent population, defined territory, and a government. Political geographers use the term state to refer to countries. The U.S. Department of State recognizes recognizes 195 independent states in the world. This number, however, is not without debate due to competing political agendas in different parts of the world. Sovereignty is defined as having supreme independent authority over a territory. When a state is recognized by the international community, it has sovereignty within defined borders and the right to defend itself. Many students are very familiar with one basic aspect of the political organization of space because they have spent time in school looking at political maps and memorizing the location of the world's states. The political organization of space is much more complicated and interesting than this alone, however. Another important term is nationalism. Political geographers use the term nation to refer to a group of people who share a common culture and identify as a group. A nation can be thought of as an ethnic or cultural community. Nationalism is defined as loyalty and devotion to a particular nationality. Emerging in the late 18th century with the French Revolution, nationalism had an important impact on Europe in the 19th and 20th centuries and still continues to do so today. In the 19th century, nationalism was both a force of political unity and disunity. It helped unify the states of Italy and Germany through the efforts of individuals like Otto von Bismarck and Giuseppe Garibaldi. At the same time, nationalism helped destabilize the diverse empires of Russia and Austria-Hungary. As groups and individuals sought to identify with language, religion, and cultural background, tensions often emerged. The most extreme examples of these tensions leading to conflict can be seen in the outbreak of two world wars in the 20th century. The Black Hand, associated with the assassination of Franz Ferdinand, Italy's black shirts, and Germany's brown shirts, all had strong nationalist beliefs. World War I and and two also led to the establishment of another key element of political geography, the emergence of supranational organizations or institutions. A supranational organization is an alliance of three or more states for a specific purpose. The belief is that collectively these states may be more successful working together than working independently. The 20th century saw the emergence of many different supranational organizations prompted by the massive destruction associated with World War I and II. The League of Nations was formed after World War I with the goal of preventing war and was replaced by the United Nations after World War II. Forty-nine states were a part of the United Nations in 1945, but by 2006, membership, membership expanded and reached 192. 
the European coal and steel community expanded to become the common market and eventually the European Union. Military organizations such as NATO and the Warsaw Pact have also existed to provide common defense policies. In order to join one of these alliances, a state must often give up some power or control. As a result, these alliances present a challenge to the concept of state sovereignty. In this sense, an argument could be made that nationalism is on the decline in some parts of the world. A counter to this argument is possible, however. Spain is challenged by groups demanding change in the Basque region and Catalonia, just as Russia faces challenges from its many nationalities. Sometimes challenging and always interesting, nationalism and issues of sovereignty are important topics in the social studies classroom. Good luck as you find cool and engaging ways to discuss these topics with your students. Thanks for listening. You have been listening to a production of the Minnesota Alliance for Geographic Education. Background music is courtesy of Jim Hogue of Decorah, Iowa. The Minnesota Alliance is a nonprofit group of educators and other parties who are interested in promoting an enhanced understanding of our world through improved geographic literacy.